Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we continue to study the process of speech production and we study the features of the produced speech by this particular process. The source that we have been studying for some time now is the Paniniya Shiksha and the verses that are displayed on the slide. Atma buddhya sametyarthan mano yungte vivakshaya manah kaya agni mahanti saprera yati marutam marutas tu rasi charan mandram janayati svaram sodiruno murdhya vihato these verses can be arranged in terms of stages in this manner. There are eight stages that are described in these verses. The first stage is Atma Buddhya Sametyarthan. The second one is Mano Yungte Vivakshaya. The third one is Manah Kayagni Mahanti. The fourth one is Saprera Yati Marutam. The fifth one is Marutas Tu Rasicharan Mandram Janayati Svaram. The sixth one is Sodiruno Murdhnyavihato. The seventh one is Vaktram Apadya Marutaha. And the final and the eighth stage in this process is Varnan Janayate. We have also seen that the first two Atma buddhya sametyarthan mano yungte vivakshaya, these two they form the part of the internal cognitive process and can be termed as or are in fact termed as the cause for this entire physical process described in the rest of the stages. So these two are more internal, they are the cause and it is in fact they are very important and that is why we have studied these two in quite a lot of detail which is not done in any of the traditional sources. And then from 3 onwards are the physical or the biological processes until the 8th stage arises when the sounds are actually produced. And then there are lots of internal factors playing key roles namely Maruta the wind and then the wind being propelled up hitting the roof of the wind pipe or the oral cavity and then <coughs> entering the mouth and hitting on the various places and then generating the sounds, generating the speech. In this entire process there is one most important means which plays a very crucial role in the oral cavity that is recognized and described in the traditional sources and that is jivha or tongue. It is said jivha to karanam smritam, jivha is considered to be the karana. Karana is traditionally interpreted as the most effective means, the such a means which when gets activated brings about the result of the performed action. So jivha is such a important means in the process of speech production primarily because the tongue shapes the wind flow in the oral cavity by directing itself towards the places of articulation and we shall see which are those places recognized in the traditional sources and in the Paninian grammar. The tongue also touches, actually touches the places of articulation in oral cavity to produce sounds. Tongue also lies down in order for the air flow to pass unhindered freely out of the oral cavity. 
The other important part is also the oral aperture that we shall study later on. But jivha is recognized as the most important means in the oral cavity. And then the sounds that are produced, the speech that is produced through this particular process described can be shown on this particular slide. On the left hand side we have artha and this left hand side represents the first two stages namely atma buddhya samityarthan mano yungte vivakshaya these two stages and out of them as we have already studied shabdakasha and arthakasha these are those two places these are those two aspects now they both are collected over here they both are part of this here we have not explicitly stated the shabdakasha but you have actually stated the arthakasha now from this it is assumed that shabdakasha also exists over here because of the want of space we have not mentioned shabdakasha but it is assumed very much assumed and when this all gets activated it actually generates these sounds these speech signals mentioned here as shabda so from the artha the shabda gets generated so this is the arthakasha together with it there exists also a shabdakasha and then it generates the entire process at the end of which these sounds these signals are produced and they are all produced as one unit so that's why there is a square bracket at the end of each and every sentence and since these sentences are uttered in close proximity one after another there is also a broad domain in which these sentences are spoken the broad context because of which the interrelation between the sentences will be clear for example in the first sentence you have ramo vanam gachati which means ram goes to forest now the second sentence because the context demands the arthakasha as well as the shabdakasha demands that we don't need to utter the word rama again in its place we can use a pronoun which is saha now this saha will depend on this ramaha because of the context now so he then does the penance in the forest so that is what is understood by this sentence and this he is nothing but rama that is decided by this context so the domain now of these five sentences will be also helpful in clearly understanding this sentence and this and such sentences and then thereby the communication process will take place now the sentences that are produced here and let me read the sentences for you first let me read the artha which says ram goes to a forest there he does penance then he slays vali then he slays ravana then he comes back these are the meanings associated with it and then the respective shabdas are selected and then the process starts and finally as an output of this process we get the following shabdas following speech which is audible and that is ramo vanam gachati vane sah tapah karoti <coughs> tatas valinam hanti tatas ravanam hanti tatas sah pratyagachati these are the five sentences which are audible which are the output of this entire process but quite a lot goes behind the curtain so to speak in producing these sentences and these speech symbols and we have actually studied what goes inside so these sentences are produced at the as the output of this process of speech production and they are made up of the sounds sound sequences groups of sounds which are displayed on this particular slide in a structured manner first of all we see a e u r u l u a i o a u as sounds separately written from the rest for some specific purpose we shall see why then there are some other sounds which are arranged in five columns and five rows format each column is named 1 2 3 4 and 5 c1 c2 c3 c4 and c5 
and each row is named R1, R2, R3, R4 and R5. And then there are these consonants k, k, g, g, ng, ch, ch, j, j, y, t, th, d, dh, n, t, th, d, dh, n, p, ph, b, bh, m, y, r, l, v, sh, sh, s and h. Sh, sh, s and h. This is the traditional sound inventory. We had studied this when we learnt how to form the pratyahara. Now let us study the importance of this arrangement and also certain principles on which this arrangement is made. So the features of these sounds they are extremely important from this point of view. For example, there are these features which are stated in this particular verse from the Paniniya Shiksha. It says, Swarata Kalata Sthanat Prayatnanu Pradhanataha. So there are four features stated here. The first one is Swara, then Kala, then Sthana and Prayatnanu Pradhana, that is the last one. Now for our purpose, we take Kala, the first one, length, Kala, uh, also called as Pramana. Then we study the place of articulation namely the sthana, then the prayatna which is described as effort of articulation and finally the pitch or tone which is also the swara. So these are the four very important features of these sounds and now let us study each one of them in detail. So let us look at the first feature of the sounds namely the length of the sound also known as pramana. So the length of the sound which is measured in terms of the time that it takes to produce is an important feature. The traditional measurement is called matra which can be also measured using the modern technological tools and it comes to a few seconds. Now, using matra as a measurement to measure the length of the sound, we can classify sounds. In fact, half a matra time is taken by certain sounds to get produced and they are in fact classified as a separate group of sounds and they are called consonants, also known as hal in the Paninian grammatical terminology and we have already studied what hal is, all the consonants. It is said about the consonants that they cannot be produced without the support of vowels. Of course, in continuation, you can produce them individually, but when it is a sequence, sequence of sounds produced to convey some meaning in the process of communication, then you cannot have groups of consonants coming together without having a vowel in between to support them. There are some exceptions where you can have a cluster of consonants, but that is only an exception which proves the rule that the consonants cannot be produced without the vowels support. Now if half a matra length is considered as the criterion to classify some sounds and call them consonants, then one matra or more than one matra is also considered to be a measurement which using which sounds can be classified and these sounds are called vowels. And in the traditional terminology, Paninian terminology using the pratyahara we can call them ach. We have seen what ach is in contrast to what hal is, all the vowels in the 14 sutras that we have studied which are used to form pratyahara. So this is how length plays a crucial role as far as the classification of sound as a feature. So here we can show in the traditional inventory why a, e, u, ru, lu, a, i, o, o are separated from the rest primarily because they require one matra or more than one matra time to get produced 
and that is why they are called, they are classified separately from the rest because the rest of them, they take only half a matra time to get produced. This is the biggest difference. And these consonants and these sounds which are called consonants and also known as hal or vyanjana in Sanskrit, these sounds they cannot appear in sequence for a long space. Maximum four consonants can come together without getting a vowel in between, but that is only rarely. That is an exception. Otherwise, a consonant cluster is generally a cluster of two consonants coming together without any vowel in between, generally. But otherwise, as I said earlier, this exception proves the rule that the consonants cannot appear on their own without the support of a vowel in Sanskrit. So, these consonants, so these consonants, they are grouped together and that is the reason why they are all placed in one place separated from these vowels. These are the ach or swara and these ones, they are the consonants or hal or vyanjana. And we have already read these sounds, we have already read the sounds that correspond with these written symbols. So let us proceed further. This is how the time plays an important role. This is how the pramana plays an important role as a feature in classification of sounds. Then comes within the vowels. The vowels can further be classified depending on the length or the color. So there are three groups that can be made. One is called rasva, the other one is called dirgha and the third one is plitha. Rasva vowel is a short vowel and it takes only one matra time for its pronunciation. Whereas dirgha vowel takes two matras and plutha vowel takes three matras for its pronunciation, its production. And that is why dirgha is called long, plutha is called prolated. So here are three further classifications of the vowels on the basis of the time that the sounds take for completion in the process of speech production. The next important feature of these sounds in the process of speech production is sthana. Sthana is the place of articulation and in the Paniniya Shiksha, eight such places of articulation are described and they are Ashtau Sthanani Varnanam, Urakh Kanthashiras Tatha, Jivva Mulan Chadantascha, Nasi Koshthau Chataluch. These eight places are Uras, Kantha, Shiras, Jivhamul, Nasika, Oshthau and Talu. And let us see what these places of articulation are and which are the sounds which are produced through these places of articulation. First of all, what is a place of articulation? So when the air flow comes into the oral cavity through the windpipe, this air flow or air stream then is shaped by the position of the tongue and then this tongue either touches certain places in the oral cavity or directs the wind stream, air stream towards these places and then these places are called the place of articulation. So points in the oral cavity where the air stream strikes and then is thrown out is called the place of articulation. They are as listed earlier, Kantha, Talu, Murdhan, Danta, Oshthau, Jivhamula, Nasika and Uras. And here are some sounds that are produced using these places of articulation. For example, Kantha which is Vellum and A uh is produced using Kantha and also the all the sounds mentioned in the first row K, K, G, G, Ng they are also produced using kantha as the place of articulation. Similarly, talu, palate is used to produce the vowel e and also amongst the consonants 
the second row. Ch, ch, j, 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 yeah. Then comes Murdhan. And Murdhan means roof of the oral cavity. And amongst the vowel, R is produced using Murdhan. Similarly, the third row, namely T, T, D, D, N, this is produced using Murdhan. Then comes Danta, the tooth or teeth. L is produced using Danta and the fourth row is also used, is also produced using Danta, namely T, Th, D, D and N. Oshthau, both the lips, they are used in producing the vowel U as well as the fifth row namely P, P, B, B and M. Jivha Moola, namely the root of the tongue is used to produce the sound Jivha Mooliya. Nasika is used to produce the consonants in the fifth column. They are ng, y, an, n and m. And finally uras through which is produced a special sound h. So this is how the place of articulation works and classifies the sounds produced through the process of speech production. So here is the traditional sound inventory highlighting the sthanas and you see now there are some additional sounds mentioned here a and h along with k, k, g, g, n, they are produced using kantha. Similarly, e, y and sh apart from ch, ch, j, j and y they are produced using the place talu within the oral cavity. Then from murdhan are produced r and r and t, th, d, dh and n. Then from danta lu and l and th, th, d, dh, n. From osht, u, v and p, p, b, b and m. These are the sounds that are produced. From kanthatalu two places of articulation coming together a and i are produced. From kantha oshtha again two places of articulation coming together o and au are produced. Now let us look at the effort of articulation. The effort of articulation stands for the quality of air stream or volume touching the windpipe or vocal cord etc. And these efforts of articulation are of two kinds, abhyantara internal inside the oral cavity or bahya external that is out of oral cavity in the windpipe etc. So there are four types of abhyantara prayatnas listed down, sprishta meaning contact, touch of the tongue with the place of articulation that is all rho from 1 to 5, columns 1, C1 to C5, all of them they are having the effort, abhyantara effort namely sprishta. Then ishat sprishta, slight contact, slight touch of the tongue with the place of articulation and we have here r, l and v produced from this produced using this effort of articulation. Then vivruta, openness of the oral aperture, all the vowels except a, short a is produced using this abhyantara prayatna and sh, sh, s and h are also produced by this abhyantara prayatna. The short a is produced by closed aperture, so it is called samruta abhyantara prayatna using which a is produced. Once again we have the traditional sound inventory with the marks of the abhyantara prayatna, the effort of articulation. So all the vowels except a, they are vivruta and a is samruta. 
all these five rows plus five columns they are called sprishta here lava they are called ishat sprishta and shashasah they are also called vivruta because their abhyantara prayatna is vivruta next we go to the effort of articulation which is bahya prayatna and here there are a number of prayatnas that are listed down and on this slide we note them and also point the consonants which are having that particular bahya bahya prayatna generally these bahya prayatnas are described of only these consonants so that's why they are listed here so for example shwasa which is breath so heavy breath this is used to produce columns 1 and 2 and sha sha sa nada that is resonance this is the bahya prayatna of columns 3 4 and 5 and her aghosha voiceless this is the bahya prayatna of column 1 and 2 and sha sha sa ghosha that is voice this is once again the bahya prayatna of columns 3 4 5 and her vivara openness is the bahya prayatna of columns 1 and 2 plus sh sh and s samvara is the bahya prayatna closure of columns 3 4 and 5 and her in addition to them there is alpa prana less aspirate which is the bahya prayatna of columns 1 3 and 5 and maha prana more aspirate which is the bahya prayatna of columns 2 and 4 plus sh sh s and h let us look at the traditional sound inventory with the information of bahya prayatnas included so here we have column 1 shwasa aghosha vivara column 2 nad ghosha samvara and maha prana so this column is alpa prana we have not mentioned a here for the sake of avoiding ambiguity but because of this ma which is maha prana it should be clear that this is alpa prana this is maha prana so let us look at the traditional sound inventory with the marks of the bahya prayatna so here are the bahya prayatna marked on the consonants so the first column is called shwasa aghosha and vivara having these bahya prayatnas the second column has nad ghosha samvara and maha prana in contrast with maha prana c1 is alpa prana c3 is also alpa prana c5 is also alpa prana but we have not mentioned a again to avoid the ambiguity but the absence of that fourth feature mentioned here and the fourth feature mentioned here should make it clear that this is alpa prana only maha prana is explicitly mentioned otherwise every consonant is alpa prana so shwasa aghosha vivara this is the bahya prayatna of column 1 nad aghosha samvara and maha prana is the bahya prayatna of column 2 shwasa aghosha vivara again is the bahya prayatna of column 3 nad aghosha samvara and maha prana is again the bahya prayatna of column 4 and shwasa aghosha vivara is once again the bahya prayatna of column 5 <clears throat> now even the sh sh s they are said to possess the bahya prayatna shwasa aghosha vivara and maha prana and h is said to possess the bahya prayatna nad aghosha samvara and maha prana so this is how the bahya prayatnas are marked over sounds and sounds can be classified in accordance with the bahya prayatna and as we shall see later on it is these bahya prayatnas which will become very important when we decide about a substitute in place of a substituent now the last feature which is used to describe these sounds is pitch or tone also known as swara accent and there are three accents noted namely udatta acute anudatta grave and swarita namely circumflex and all these are the features of vowels 
these can never be the features of consonants in Sanskrit. To summarize, we studied the features of sounds produced by the process of speech production as described in the traditional sources of Paninian grammar. Let us take each individual sound and now study what features it possesses. These features serve as parameters for selection of a substitute in place of a substituent. We shall study this in the coming lectures. Thank you for your attention.